All right, good afternoon. Uh, the Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed, today addressed the 40th session of the Human Rights Council in Geneva, and she saluted the Council for its outstanding contributions for human rights, and in particular for Agenda 2030. She said she wanted to reinforce the rock-solid commitment to delivering on people's rights and well-being through implementing the Sustainable Development Goals. The Deputy Secretary General said the 2030 Agenda is a people's agenda which commits all of us to put people first and realize a more equitable and sustainable world, a world where no one is left behind. She added that human rights are core to the 2030 Agenda, but as the Secretary General has warned, we are off track to achieving the 2030 goals. She said we are falling behind in achieving the promise of leaving no one behind. Her full remarks um, are, available, uh, are available to you, and the Deputy Secretary General will be back in the office later today. Our colleagues in Yemen uh, are alarmed by military activities in Hajjur and the humanitarian consequences resulting from a continuation of violence to the civilians. We call on parties to exercise restraint and to refrain from any acts that would lead to further escalations. Meanwhile, the UN Refugee Agency says that civilians continue to pay a higher price for the conflict in Yemen. On average, almost 100 civilian deaths or injuries were recorded each, uh, each week in 2018. According to the Civilian Impact Monitoring Report for this year, more than four, for last year, excuse me, more than 4,800 civilian deaths and injuries were reported over the course of the year, resulting in an average of 93 civilian casualties per week. And today, uh, the UN and the Syrian Arab Red Crescent completed an interagency convoy delivering humanitarian assistance to meet urgent needs of 50,000 people in the Mem Menbij area and surrounding areas in northwest Aleppo governorate. A total of 37 trucks carried 862 metric tons of food and other items, education materials, nutritional, medical supplies that the Red Crescent will distribute in the coming days, female-headed households, people living disabilities, and those living in informal settlements, all considered particularly vulnerable, will be prioritized in the distribution. For the food supplies, for 50,000 people are expected to excuse me, the food supplies for 50,000 people are expected to last approximately 30 days, while the medical supplies will treat more than 80,000 people. Uh, and Mem uh, Membij and surrounding areas have witnessed periods of heightened hostilities and large-scale displacement, displacement throughout the Syrian crisis. Humanitarian response has been limited in the area, and despite a gradual cessation of hostilities in the past two years, needs remain high. The UN calls for safe, sustained, and unimpeded access to Menbij to facilitate the regular delivery of assistance and services to meet the needs of the population. And the government of Ethiopia and humanitarian partners today launched the country's 2019 humanitarian response plan, seeking $1.3 billion to reach 8.3 million people with emergency assistance. An increase in conflict-related displacement in various parts of the country has led to a near doubling of the number of internally displaced people. That's according to the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. Some 2.7 million people, uh, displaced people and returnees will benefit from emergency shelter and non-food assistance. Both displacement and lack of recovery opportunities have contributed uh, to higher humanitarian needs this year. Some 8 million people need relief, 4.4 million need nutrition, 7.2 million are in need of support to regularly access safe drinking water. Without additional funding, our humanitarian colleagues say most of life-saving operations will cease uh, beyond March. And a new report I wanted to flag today from the International Labor Organization and it says that over the past 27 years, there have been very little improvement in closing the work gender gap. In 2018, women were 26 percentage points less likely to be employed than men, despite 70 percent of women saying they would rather be employed than stay at home. This is an improvement of only two percentage points in almost three decades. In addition, women are still underrepresented at the top, with less than one-third of managers being women, although they are likely to be better educated than their male counterparts. The report says that education is not the main reason for low employment rates but, and lower pay for women, but rather that women do not receive the same dividends for education as men. Moreover, mothers experience a motherhood wage penalty that compounds across their working life while fathers enjoy a wage premium. ILO said that quantum leap is needed to make progress, including by changing policies 
that would ensure equal opportunities, the right to be free from discrimination, violence, and harassment, and equal pay for equal work of equal value. You can find the report online. Meanwhile, our friends across the street at UNICEF say in a new report that they have found that at least 75% of the more than 5 million children living with disabilities in Eastern and Central Europe and Central Asia are excluded from quality, inclusive education. Evidence points to millions of children with disabilities never entering school. For those who do, hundreds of thousands of them are segregated from their peers and communities. UNICEF is calling for the investments and the avail availability and affordability of assistive uh, technologies such as special tablets and lightweight wheelchairs. And today in, um, sorry, uh, wanted to flag the uh, Global Food uh, Price Index for the month of February from the FAO. And the index is up 1.7% from January, in part uh, driven up by sharp increases in dairy prices. The index, which as you know is a monthly indicator of changes in international prices of a basket of food commodities, is currently at its highest level since August 2018, but remains nearly 2.3% below its value the same month last year. In its new serial supply and demand brief, also published by FAO, uh, lowered the world's 2018 cereal production estimate, reinforcing an overall year-on decrease in global cereal production. More information online. Uh, and uh, today we are delighted that the UN Development Program is appointing Emmy-nominated television personality, an award-winning author, and internationally acclaimed food expert, uh, Pad uh, Padma Lakshmi, as the new Goodwill Ambassador for UNDP. In her new role, she will mobilize support for the Sustainable Development Goals with a focus on fighting inequality, discrimination, and empowering the disenfranchised. And after uh, you are done with me, I will be joined by Zachary Mwangi Chege, the chair of the 50th session of the UN Statistical Commission and director general of Kenya's National Bureau of Statistics. And he will be joined by our friend and colleague, Stefan Schweinfest, the director of the UN Statistics Division, who will brief on the work of the Commission, including the ongoing discussions ref um, on refined indicator framework and measures to close the funding gap. Um, and tomorrow at 11 o'clock, there'll be uh, a press conference by the President of the PGA, uh, which I think, I assume Monica has already told you about. Palas, yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Stefan. Uh, regarding the humanitarian convoy that reached the, the city of Manbij in northern Syria today, there have been some reports in the Arabic media, and there is one in particular in the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, yeah. speaking about uh, not the whole convoy reached the Manbij, and some trucks were stolen uh, along the way to Membej. Do you have any information about no, this? No, it's topic? a good uh, question. I can only report to what's actually made it into, uh, into the area, but I will look at those uh, disturbing reports of theft of convoys. Masuji. Thank you, Stefan. Stefan, can you tell, tell us, so when will the Secretary General, uh, I mean, I know he's monitoring the situation in the Indo Park subcontinent. When will he be able to act and talk to the leaders of India and Pakistan the, 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 the to Secretary stop the, the sec tension that are there? The Secretary General and uh, members of his staff are in touch, have uh, been in touch with uh, the parties at various levels. We continue to monitor the situation and be available uh, to the parties. Yes, sir. Is some um, Venezuela? <clears throat> Venezuela borders are closed since. February 21st, and <clears throat> is there any information about the crisis where now Venezuelans are leaving the country using path or trying to get into the country with food or medicine to assist their families? And so do you have any update on this? Regarding no, we don't have, as far as I know, we don't have uh, people at the, uh, at the main uh, at the borders. Uh, I'm not aware that we we, we do. Uh, we obviously are continuing uh, to express our concern about uh, the overall situation uh, in Venezuela, but I have no detailed updates for you for today. Madam. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a question um, regarding uh, the chairman, uh, Carlos Rosson. Is there any role played by the release on bail of Mr. Carlos Rosson, who is the chairman of Nissan, uh, Renault, and Mitsubishi? 
Uh, is the Secretary General played a role in his release? Uh, no, he did not. There, because there was a plea. No, I, I mean, I, uh, there, there was no Today involvement. Of, there was no involvement of the Secretary General. There been, may be messages passed to other parts of the UN, but uh, speaking for the Secretary General, he had uh, he's had no involvement whatsoever. Uh, in this case, because it's a human rights issue. No, no, I, 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 I what I'm, I can only, you know, you, you, I don't know what may have been uh, sent to the Human Rights Council or special rapporteurs. I can tell you, as far as the Secretary General, there's been no involvement uh, in this case. Yeah. Yeah. Regarding Venezuela again, what what concrete steps are the UN agencies or affiliated uh, NGOs that are working with the UN? Uh, taking to ensure that the food and medical supplies and other humanitarian aid that the UN is overseeing are distributed equitably. Uh, I assume you're working with the government agencies in, uh, in the Maduro regime in Venezuela. What steps are being taken to ensure that 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 aid reaches the people in need based on need and not uh, based on political favoritism by the Maduro regime, et cetera? Look, uh, as a matter of principle, this goes across the board for every country we, uh, we work in. Aid uh, has to be distributed uh, based on, on needs and needs to be uh, removed from any uh, political consideration. So, and that's how we operate uh, in, in every country. But that, that's the, a the, the, the UN has, yeah. a, has a presence. In uh, Venezuela, we've worked, our, our folks on the ground, or human, uh, uh, whether it's UNICEF or the, the health organization, uh, work in, in partnership uh, with the government. And what, uh, what programs are run uh, by the UN are done in full, uh, uh, in, in keeping with the humanitarian uh, principles. I cannot speak to aid that may or may not be distributed outside other channels uh, or programs that are run through other channels, but I can only speak to what the UN is doing. But what I'm trying to do is uh, drill down a little bit. I understand the principles and the objectives, but for example, last week, uh, I believe Mr. Abrams indicated that they were one of the reasons for the reluctance of the U.S. to work primarily through the UN is what he claimed was diversion of the aid that the UN, that the UN is overseeing in, uh, by the Maduro the, the regime. UN, so UN, what UN, aid, UN aid is monitored. I'm not aware of any uh, reluctance expressed by the United States or anybody else to not to work. But uh, how is it monitored to make sure that it is actually reaching the, all the, the people in UN, need based the, on the aid? UN aid programs, UN aid programs run, run by the United Nations or affiliated agencies are done outside of political considerations. Idi. Um, two questions. First, um, is there any update from Martin Griffiths on um, talks or what might be happening on the redeployment he of is, forces uh, from Hodeida? Yeah. Uh, nothing to announce. Uh, he and his team were in Muscat uh, today. Uh, in Oman, uh, they are now, uh, I think, on their way back, uh, on their way back to Jordan. Uh, the discussions are continuing to to be had. I think we are as eager as you and as eager as the people of Hodeida and Yemen uh, to move forward, uh, but we have nothing, uh, nothing to announce. And does the Secretary General have any comment on um, the expulsion uh, from? Venezuela of a the German ambassador who greeted opposition leader Juan Guaido at the airport and an American freelance journalist. No, on the journalists, I think we we expressed our principal position uh, yesterday on the issue of uh, ambassadors. That's a bilateral issue between Venezuela and Germany. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stefan. Um, just I. Um, want to know if you have any uh, new statements regarding the um, education camps in China and also uh, since uh, next week is going to be the 60th anniversary for the Tibetan uprising, whether you have any comment on that? No, I, I do not, and I would refer you uh, to the comments made by the High Commission for Human Rights, I think, yesterday in Geneva. Yes, Masood. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Stefan. Uh, on Venezuela again, I mean, now that the opposition leader is also there and that the situation besides the German ambassador being expelled, the, the, the arrest of the American judge, does the Secretary General see any way that uh, the, this crisis can be overcome other than holding an election? Is there any the way the current crisis can be overcome is through a political dialogue. All right, I will thank you. I thank you, and I will get our guests.